Welcome to the final installment in the basic training series for the Classic 48 tracks. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Big Blue on 150cc. The recommended build for this course is going to be our higher speed build of Dry Bowser, Mach 8, Leaf Tires, and Paper Glider. When the run begins, make your way slightly to the left, and right before you pass this blue track barrier on the left, start a left drift. After building up a mini turbo, immediately start another left drift, hit the orange boost panels, and then move to the center of this coin panel on the right. Driving over the coin panel will perhaps unsurprisingly give you coins, but it's based on the amount of time you spend on the coin pad. If you take the turn too tightly, you'll only be able to get 6 coins, but if you drive over the bright blue line in the very center of the coin pad, you'll be able to get one additional coin, which increases your speed by just enough that it makes it worth it to go out of your way to get, even though the line you have to take to do so is going to be slower. After that, don't release your drift. Instead, hold it over the two orange boost pads for as long as possible, because what we're trying to do is chain these orange boost pad boosts into an ultra mini turbo. So you basically want to release and hop at the very edge of the path before the trick ramp here. After building up a super mini turbo around the left turn, we're going to release and trick off this orange boost ramp, landing in a wide left drift to avoid the right hand side of the track, since the red conveyor belt slow you down while the green conveyor belt speed you up. Release that mini turbo and once again we don't want to trick off the upcoming ramp because it will force us to take a really bad line. Instead, start a right drift in such a way that when you land from the hop, you land right on top of the trick ramp. Then, tighten up your drift and use your mushroom earlier than your brain is probably telling you you should. Because this build has bad enough handling that you'll still go super wide even if you hold a pretty hard right drift angle the whole time. And this will allow you to build up a super mini turbo while taking a really tight line. After that, start a left drift around the inside of the next turn between the off-road and the red conveyor belt, and then after building up a mini turbo, start a right drift and mushroom through the second bit of off-road, building up a super mini turbo before the glider ramp. Trick off that ramp, land on the path below, grab three more coins, and we are on to section two. Pretty much the entirety of section two has water on the track, and one interesting thing to point out is that spending time in the water here makes you go faster. Sort of like the momentum from the water is being added to your forward momentum. So we're going to want to spend as much time in it as possible. The other thing to point out about really the whole track is that we're in F-Zero physics, meaning that you can actually control your position while in mid-air. And it's kind of like flight controls, so holding a 12 o'clock position will bring you back down to the track more quickly, while holding a 6 o'clock position will make you stay in the air longer. Both of these are on full display here for section 2. Just before hitting the orange boost pad, we're going to start a wide right drift. We're then going to use this bit of upward angled track as a little ramp to cut off a lot of this right turn. Keep holding your drift so that you can charge an ultra mini turbo, and make sure to start holding a 12 o'clock position on your joystick when you do so, so that you can get back down to the track and into the water as quickly as possible. Then trick off the ramp, start a left drift, and move your joystick to about a 10 o'clock position so that you can charge up a super mini turbo before landing. You want to release this super mini turbo right before you land so that you can land in a right drift without needing to hop first. This is because hopping takes you out of the water, and thus causes you to lose a little bit of speed. We're then going to build up a super mini turbo while staying in the water for the right turn, a mini turbo while staying in the water for the left turn, and a super mini turbo while taking as tight a line as possible around the final right turn before the glider. Note that I kind of screwed this up a bit and didn't hang nearly as tight of a right turn as I should have. The last thing to point out about section 2 is that this glider ramp is what's known as a cannon glider, and it operates by shooting you across this huge gap at a really high speed. The problem is that we don't actually get up to cannon speed until after our glider comes out, so what we're going to want to do is hop on top of the glider ramp instead of tricking, because this will cause the glider to come out faster and save us about a tenth of a second over tricking. After that, we're on to section 3. The first part is fairly straightforward. Just stay on the green path and hit as many of the boost pads as you can. One exception here though is that you want to purposely move to the red bit on the left at the end of the path to hit this boost pad, because it is actually faster than just staying in the green path the whole time. Note that these boost panels operate on a global cycle, so the particulars of how you play this section may need to change depending on what sort of pace you're on when you get here. In either case, build up an ultra mini turbo after tricking off the ramp at the end of the path, and then start a right drift around the time you hit this little boost spinner in the middle of the track. Tighten up a bit when going around the turn, and then widen on the straightaway so that you can build up a super mini turbo. Build up another super mini turbo around the following right turn, and then start a left drift. We're going to do this little path switching shortcut here by driving straight off the track and releasing our mini turbo as soon as we're in midair. Then we're going to land, hit the orange boost pad, start a left drift right before hitting the second orange boost pad, and then put our joystick in a 7 or 8 o'clock position so that we can charge a super mini turbo while staying in midair long enough to clear the railing. To finish up the run, we're going to trick off the ramp and mushroom through the off-road. 
The world record isn't super different from my run, but there are a couple of notable differences. First off is that instead of tricking off the glider at the end of section 1, they build up a mini turbo and do motion glider. The other major difference is section 3. They get here at a pace that's way faster than mine, so they have to play the boost panel section a bit differently than we did. What they do is hop over the trick ramp so they can hit the first orange boost pad, and then play most of the section the same way that I did. However, at the very end, the leftmost boost panel is not out yet, so they trick off the right side ramp, which allows them to take a little bit of a tighter line than I was able to. All of that, however, requires a very specific pace to do properly, and as far as I'm aware, the current world record holder is the only person who's ever been able to get it. So, yeah, don't hold your breath is what I'm trying to say. So that's all the strats. Normally this is the part where I talk about my current personal best, but since this is the last video in this series, at least as far as the classic 48 tracks are concerned, I wanted to do something a little bit different to wrap things up. First of all, thank you all so much for going on this journey with me. When I first started making videos more than two years ago at this point, I basically only ever intended them to be seen by the small group of friends that I play with online, and I never for a second anticipated that my channel would grow as much as it has. My videos, and in particular the basic training series, have evolved a lot over the years. For my first couple videos, I did everything in live replays, and oftentimes I wouldn't even learn all the strategies because again, I figured if I couldn't do the strats, then the group that I play with probably couldn't do them either. Now I probably put at least 3-5 to five hours per track so I can figure out everything I possibly can before trying to share my knowledge with you all, and honestly, I'm pretty proud of how far the series has come. However, I'd be lying if I said that finishing up the series isn't at least a little bit bittersweet for me. Grinding the hell out of this game, especially for making these videos, has been a huge part of my life since the pandemic started. And so to be perfectly honest, the prospect of not having that part of my life anymore does make me feel pretty sad. On the other hand though, I've got a lot of really awesome videos that I know you'll all love, but I just haven't had time to work on them specifically because of basic training, so the silver lining to all this is that I'm going to have a lot more time to put together some amazing content for you all. As far as what comes next, I won't give too many details in this video because I do want it to be a surprise, but just know that I've got a lot more educational content coming along with some really fun and goofy video ideas that I'm super excited for. I've been asked quite a few times actually if I'm going to make some 200cc tutorials, and the short answer is not right away. While I do have some done already, there's still 83 more of those to make if we're counting DLC, and the idea of going through that monumental grind again so soon is something that I'm honestly just not mentally prepared for at the moment, but unless Mario Kart 9 comes out sometime within the next couple of years, I do definitely plan on getting to it eventually. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. Thank you all so much for your support over the past couple of years. It really does mean the world to me, and I hope that you're all as excited for the next stage in this journey as I am. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.